Good morning, good morning, and happy new year to all of you who are joining our worship service this morning. Happy new year, and I pray that your new year started out with the toppest and the highest of God's blessing. It's a pleasure to have you join us for our worship service. I welcome you into the sanctuary of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, where Timothy Troxler is our pastor. It's 2022, y'all, and we made it, and we made it. Thank God for his grace in 2021, we, we thought we was coming out of COVID, but look, he saw a way. We, we made it through, and we just thank God who continues to bless us. Now, I don't know about you out there, but I'm excited to at least see a new year, a new week, a new month. And I to encourage you, if God has blessed you and you hear me today, I encourage you right where you are to just stand up on your feet and give God a shout of praise. Just say hallelujah with me this morning. Hallelujah is the highest praise. And we are so grateful for God's grace and his mercy on us today. Listen, listen, I'm not one of those uh, preachers or people who think that, you know, that preach spot prosperity or speak those kind of things. But I do know that if God has saw you this far, that he has already blessed you immensely. And I pray that you will look forward to the blessings with high expectations, with high expectations for the things that he has for you uh, not only for today, but for the rest of this year. Our praise scripture for this morning, if you can join me with uh, our praise scripture, I'm going to read Psalms 5 verses 11 through 12. And I asked for the uh, New Living Translation this morning. I just like how that reads a little bit differently. So Psalm number 5, 11 through 12. If you're following on the screen or in your Bible, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. And the verse says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them that all who love your name may be filled with joy. Verse 12 gets me excited. It says, for you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. God, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for the opportunity to come into a new year, for another opportunity to build a chapter in my faith with you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a voice to rejoice. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you for blessing the godly, Lord. I pray this blessing upon all who hear my voice, all who are listening into this service, Lord. You encamp around them. You protect them. You love them. And because of that, Lord, it is our duty to just rejoice and praise you. Thank you, God. Prepare our hearts for the service and the sermon that we are going to hear today. I'm excited and I pray that you will be too to hear this word. Lord, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Put your hands on it, come on. This is just, this is just the year refreshing. Year refreshing. It's playing now on hold. Time of your great blessing. Thank you, Darian Dennis. Come on. Nothing but victory. That's the promise of our King. To do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask for thee. Put it in the house. Expect the
children, I want to wish you, as shepherd of the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Battle Creek, Michigan, I want to wish you a happy new year. I pray that your 2022 will be fruitful, will be prosperous, and that you will hear God speak to you, and that if you have not already uh, your calling have been revealed to you. I pray that your calling will be revealed to you this year through the preaching, teaching of God's word, through the fellowshipping of the body of the saints, and that you will get busy in your area of giftedness and your call. I thank you for helping us save souls and change lives as we continue to teach, preach, and reach souls for Christ. I thank each of you, the members of Macedonia, for an awesome 2021. I thank you for your prayers, your support, your encouragement, your love, your ministry, your labor of love. And we just look forward into, into 2022 
This is going to be a year of expectation. You will be hearing the word expectancy used a lot. Reverend Owens already used that word in, in the opening. So we're going to be uh, uh, hearing that word, talking about that word today. And we're just going to be waiting with tiptoe anticipation and expectancy to see what God has in store for us in the year of 2022. We are going forward and not backwards, upward and not downward. We thank you, God, for bringing us to this moment and to this point. Amen. Praise God. So thank you once again, all those that are joining on us on YouTube and Facebook, all of our friends, those that support us uh, financially and spiritually, that pray for us. Thank God for you and continue to do so in the name of Jesus. It's going to be an awesome year this year. Awesome year. 22 is going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And I'm not going to say like other pastors, we raise in the bar because Jesus is the bar and he can't be raised any higher than he already is. He's the highest. He's sitting on the throne. Now, what we need to do is live up to the standard. We can't raise it because Jesus said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. So we're going to, Nicole, live up to the standard and we ain't going to raise it because Jesus is already higher than the highest. He's better than the best. He's brighter than the brightest. So we just look forward to doing an awesome work with him, co-laboring with him and the Holy Spirit in the ministry, as well as the great and faithful members of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. We got awesome things uh, planned for you in sight. This is a year of expectation. Thanks be unto God who gives unto us his inexpressible gift, the gift of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is undoubtedly the Christ, the Son of the living God. To all of you, my brothers and sisters, meet me in the book of Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 3. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 3, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 5 to kick off this new year, this first Sunday excuse me, in 2022. It's going to take me a minute to get used to saying 2022. If you have the King James Version, you will find these holy, divine, and inspired words. And once again, they're not holy, divine, and inspired because they're King James. It's holy, divine, inspired because it's the word of God. King James is simply a translation. It says, if you do have that translation, verse 1, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us. And he gave heed to them. Watch this. Expecting to receive something of them. The word of God. On this first Sunday of the new year, I want to actually set the theme for where we are going to be going in the year of 2020. I want to talk from that standpoint then, from the thought, from the subject, the church imparting expectancy. The church imparting expectancy. Our 2020 theme, for those of you that can remember, it was entitled The Marks of a Mature Christian. Our 2021 theme is entitled, or was entitled, The Marks of a Mature Faith. And God, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, has has steered me to continually to talk about marks. So the, the theme for 2022, what you're going to be hearing a lot of this year is we're going to be talking about the marks of a mature church. The marks of a mature church. 
Now, a mark is a visible impression or trace, Deacon Henry, of something. Reverend Owens, as a line, a cut, a dent, a stain, a bruise, or a badge. Sister Jeanette Williams, it's a visible sign assumed or opposed. A mark, Deacon Andrew, is a distinguishing factor. The book of Revelation talks to us about the mark of the beast. Revelation 19 and 20, you've probably heard this. You've probably heard individuals uh, uh, comment on this. But, but the book of Revelation even talks about the mark of the beast. Watch this. It says in chapter 19, verse 20, <coughs> excuse me, and the beast was taken... And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received, there it is, the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20 and 4 also, it mentions that mark of the beast. John says, and and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus watch this and for the word of God which uh, had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received there it is his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years so so even the Bible talks about the mark of the beast and that Mark, you see those numbers in Revelation where some people are afraid of 666. I, I went to the store the other day and I, I purchased something and it rang up 666 and uh, it was a brother, the cashier. He said, oh no man, I can't do this. He said, do you want me to play you a lottery number? You want me to do something? I'll even put 50 cent on it for you. I don't, this is 66. I can't give this. I said, well, what, 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 why are you afraid of that? No man, that book of Revelation, 666 is simply, it tells you in Revelation, it's the number of man. So stop looking in people foreheads if your child is acting bad it's because you have not parented him it ain't because he got numbers in his head 666 is because you ain't spend 666 minutes with him or her and that's why they behaving like they behave so stop looking and stop searching people's heads when they sleep it simply means the number of man so then, my brothers and my sisters, a mark then is something that is visible to all and it is a distinguishing factor. Some sororities, Andrew, no, I'm sorry, it's not sororities, some fraternities, you see the brothers, Deacon Bonner, they have a brand or, 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 or a mark on them and what that brand or mark does, it distinguishes them to that particular fraternity and it distinguishes and separates them from any other of the Greek fraternities because of the brand or because of the mark that they have on them now 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 let me my brothers and my sisters let me let me thread together the themes of 2020 2021 and let me wed them into the needle of 2022 if the individual Christians are mature and their faith is mature then the natural result is that the church where they attend will be a mature church. Remember, 2020 theme, the marks of a mature Christian. If you are a mature Christian, theme 2021, the marks of a mature faith. If you are a mature Christian and your faith is mature, then it's only going to make sense that the church where you are at will be a mature church. You cannot have an immature Christian with an immature faith with a mature church. No, 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 that, that won't happen. Now, people don't like it when we say that some churches are full of babies and toddlers, but, but the scripture says that, Andrew, and I got to stand with the scriptures. The scripture said, let God be true and every man a liar. And I got to agree with God because 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 and Hebrews 5.11 and 14 tells us there are some babies in our churches. It's, it's biblical, Deacon Bonner, it's biblical, B. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, watch this. Paul said, as he's talking to the church in Corinth, he said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Deacon Prather, he said, but 
but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. He said, I couldn't even talk to you like an adult. I couldn't talk to you like a person that's mature. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither are you now able to bear it. Paul said, if I gave you meat, it would choke you to death. I still need to give you Gerber's food and you 42 years old. You've been in church since heck was a pup. You've been in church since 1976 and we still got to blow on your food and give you hot oatmeal and put a bib around you he said you acting like a baby he said for you are yet carnal verse 3 for where is among you there's envying there's strife there's divisions are you not carnal and walk as men that's one of the clues that you're still a baby if you got strife if you're envying if you got jealousy if you're backbiting if you're gossiping that proves that you need to be in the nursery and we need to get some of the kids in the nursery and bring them in the sanctuary and take some of the adults in the sanctuary and put them in the nursery and give him some grand crackers and grape juice he, he, he says this watch what Hebrews chapter 5 verses 11 through 14 says Paul says or whoever wrote the book of Hebrews said of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered he said seeing you are dull of hearing he said for when the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat mm. he said for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe so there it is again it's not me the Bible tells us that there's babies in our church he said but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so unfortunately I'm not proud of it but I have to admit that a lot of our churches are still acting as if we are spiritual babes in Christ. Now, when I said earlier that if the individual's Christian's faith is mature and the individual Christian is mature, then the natural result is the church where they attend will be a mature church. But now I need to say this. When I mention attend, I, I, I don't mean come to. No, no, no. I mean belong to actively engage continuously in the life of the body so then as my brothers and my sisters as we focus on our 2022 theme the marks of a mature church the visible impression the visible sign the branding or the distinguishing the distinguishing factors are actually listed in verses 3 through 10 for us and this once again is going to be our theme for the year and these are going to be our marks for the year the marks of a mature church and verses 3 through 10 gives us the five marks or markers, if you will. In verses 3 through 5, a mature church imparts expectancy. And you're going to be seeing this on our website. You'll be seeing this on social media. We're going to put this in front of you, so it, it, it's going to be there for 2022. The second mark is in verses 6 and 7, a mature church imparts healing. In verse 8, a mature church, the third mark, imparts joy. In verse 9, number 4, a mature church imparts wonder. And then in verse 10, a mature church imparts a witness. So, so those are our five marks, if you will. So if you see a bullseye and if you see arrows, it would be going into each of those. We're going to be imparting expectancy, imparting healing, imparting joy, imparting wonder, and imparting a witness. <coughs> Now, for some, church has always been a part of our lives since we were children. Anytime the church doors were open, you, we were there, whether it was by hook or by crook, whether it was by faith or by force. And depending on your denomination, you had a morning service, an afternoon service, and an evening service. And no, regardless of the denomination, you had a choir rehearsal, you had an ushers meeting, you had midweek press service, you had Bible study and press service, you had vacation Bible school, depending on when you grew up, you had Baptist training union, you had a 40 day revival, you had a tent revival, whatever it is, whatever it was, the case, you, me, we were there, some of us, every time the church door opened. And for some, Sister Betty Williams, after doing this, for quite some time, these times together became routine. 
Even now, for some Christians, the weekly repetition of Sunday worship has become mundane and monotonous. For some, Reverend Owens, Reverend Jackson, uh, uh, Reverend Perry, it's formality without fervor. For others, there is presence with no passion. For others, there is church without connection. For others, Deacon Williams, there is songs without spirit. And for others, there is duty without devotion. In other words, some of us are just going through what we call the motions. We've become lukewarm and tepid concerning the things of God. We've become cold and callous to the things of God. We have actually replaced, Delbert, celebration with cerebralism. We used to come to church and it was about spirit. Now we come to the church and it's about head and how I feel. Some are present without any presence. Some are in the building while remaining outside of the body. Some are amid the believers but not among the believers. We come into the one body and then want to separate into fractions. Lord's Day can and should be so much more. Our time together should be supernatural and exciting. In all of our isolation, we need now more than ever to come together. Let me give you a quick 11 reasons why we need to come together. These aren't points, just such as reasons that we need to come together. Number one, because believers need help to reflect on the past week and see it just as a small part of the journey of life. Secondly, because we will benefit from being taught and led in worship by others rather than feeding on a constant diet of our own choosing. Thirdly, because we need regular reminders of our standing in Christ. We need help in acknowledging and confessing our sin and teachings about God's truth. Fourthly, we need to hear how believers in the past struggled, grew, and lived out their faith. Fifthly, because we need to experience artistic and creative expressions of faith, such as the public reading of the scriptures, Reverend Owens did that, corporate praise, corporate worship, music, prayers, teaching, preaching, and communion. We need also uh, uh, to come together because we need to build our faith so that we can rightly respond and react biblically to the pressures of life. Because we need to hear about the experiences of other contemporary believers. It's good to hear about Abraham. It's good to hear about Isaac. It's good to know that God blessed Jacob. But I need to know that God healed Sister Williams. I, I need to know that God brought Reverend Orange through breast cancer. I need to know that God delivered you from the snare of the fowler and from the mouth of destruction. I can touch you. I can feel you. I thank God. And God is no respecter of persons. What is done for others, he'll do for me so it's good to read about David and the Lord is my shepherd but I need some time to hear from Deacon Henry I need to know God bless Deacon Bonner I need to know he picked Delbert up I need to know we need to see witnesses examples and testimonies of what God is still doing not just what he did I need to know that he blessed Sheena and Quentin and Nicole and Titus and Zoe and Jay I need to know what he's still doing because we need a conscious break. We need to come together because we need a, a conscious break from work and self entrance in order to concentrate on the Lord. We need to come together because we need an alternative to the constant messages of a culture that ignores God. We need to come together because we need to hear reminders of God's love. We need to come together because we need to belong to a community of faith that includes others trying to live out the gospel. I know folk want to be isolated, but the church is not the place to be socially distant now brothers and my sisters the assembling of God's people it provides the opportunity for reciprocal encouragement the strengthening and the stirring up that can only be gained from one another it's some stuff inside the body you gonna never pick up outside of the body it's some stuff you gonna get in the body of Christ you can't get in the pool hall you can't get from your sorority you can't get from your uh, 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 what's the other one the sorority or the fraternity it's some stuff 
stuff you can't get from your gee club. It's some stuff you can't get from the NAACP. It's some stuff you can't get from your ball team because we are based here. We are brought together. We are linked together with the spirit of God and some of that other stuff don't have spirit in it and if it has the spirit in it, it's not necessarily the spirit of God. Now, I'm not saying those individuals in those things don't have God's spirit. That's not what I'm saying but there's some people in those organizations that don't even believe in the God of our salvation. So there's only some things that you're going to get from the body of Christ when you hook up and tie up with other believers. So I'm not, I'm not down in your fraternity or your sorority saying y'all ain't saved. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that, that's not what I'm saying. But if you are saved, you wouldn't be beating on people. You wouldn't be trying to do this and do that to them to let them get into your organization because God, that ain't, that ain't, uh, you need to stop that. We didn't kill people trying to haze them to get into, no, you, we need to stop all that. So if you're beating people and mistreating people, I don't care what fraternity your name is, it's wrong. So, my brothers and my sisters, I've heard individuals say, well, you know, Reverend, the church is a hospital. Well, that's true, and then it's not so true. The church is not merely a hospital. The church is not merely a dispensary uh, of spiritual food and medicine, but the biblical church is a body interacting. Watch Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. Once again, the church is a body interacting. It's not members not coming. It says in Hebrews uh, 10, 22, it said, let us, let us draw near. Oh, 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 uh, so we, so let us draw, now, not let us be socially distant. Let us draw near with a true heart, a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Watch this. You got the first let us. Here's the second let us. You need vegetables. It said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he that is faithful is promised. That's the second let us. Somebody needs to eat lettuce today. Verse 24. Here it is again. Somebody need to eat a salad. It said, let us consider one another. Let us, let us, let us consider one another. Watch this. To provoke unto love and to good works. How you gonna provoke me to love and good works if you ain't never in the body with me? You can't provoke me socially distant. He said in verse 25, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. Let me put that where you can get it. Get your rusted, dusty butt to church. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Some of y'all stand at home talking about it's COVID. I see you in Walmart. I see you in Texas Corral, Texas Roadhouse, Texas, 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 Texas. Texas gun smoke everywhere but all of a sudden it's COVID I can't come to church you go to the club but you can't come to the... you everywhere you in Target you everywhere and here's the thing you everywhere and ain't got no money to be everywhere you go in places where they have a cover charge and won't come to not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but watch this exhorting one another Ooh, so much more as you see the day approaching. A body interacting. Ooh, my brothers and my sisters. Watch this now. This should cause all kinds of eagerness and expectancy for us. But unfortunately, watch this. Watch this, Devon. Watch this. Watch this, Odessa. Watch this, Tommy. Watch this. Watch this, Petri. Unfortunately, the church is one of the few places where people actually expect anything to happen. Think about it. You go to a concert, you expect good music. You might not get it, but you expect it. You go to a restaurant, you expect good food. You might not get it, but you're expecting it. You go on vacay. You go to South Beach. You go to Miami. You expect a good time. You don't expect people to think Andy's Jim Harbaugh, but you expect a good time. You go to a sporting event and depend who's playing, you expect a good competition. Unless... Yeah, understand. I ain't finna talk about nobody's school. You, you, you go to the movies, you expect a good plot and a good ending. But Nicole, Josh, and Jada, Jerry and Joe, and Phyllis, Uncle Ali, Ali Jr., and Angela, you, you come to the church and expect nothing. I mean, nothing. Oh, let me take that back. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You expect to sit in your unassigned seat 
that's been assigned to you, for you, and by you. When people come to church, they expect the deacons to pray. They expect the choir to sing. They expect, let me use the R right, like the ushers to usher. To provide them with the bulletin. And Sister Williams and I can tell you that they don't read. Because they will turn around and ask you a question about, I didn't know this. And it was in the bulletin. She... They expect to hear a few announcements. They expect an offering to be taken. And they expect the preacher to preach. Now, my brothers and my sisters, did, did anything stand out to you in those expectations that I just mentioned? Do you know not one of them involved anything from God? <laughs> All that stuff we could. There was no eagerness to experience God in a new, fresh and exciting way. There was no eagerness or anticipation or excitement or expectancy to experience God's goodness. There was no eagerness, excitement or expectancy for anything that changed except the date on the bulletin. <sighs> Could this attitude be in any way attributed to how the church views God? I ain't talking about sinners. The church. Mm. Could it be that we, the church, the body of Christ, is actually personifying God, Deacon Nash, in the worst way? Dr. Matthews, Brother Mike, Brother, Brother Randall, Sister Irvin, are we, are we picturing God as this angry critic that sits on his throne annoyed by all of our imperfection and failures? And every time we move or hiccup, we think he has a hammer and pfft. Have we been the ones that make people feel that God is distant and not at all concerned about what's going on in our world because we ain't concerned about... <clears throat> Do we prepare our hearts to have a God encounter? I mean, what... What do you do on Saturday? You do you just do you just do anything and like what, what do you do? Is there any preparation for heart, mind, soul? Now I'm not talking about just waiting till Saturday, but obviously you got Monday through or Sunday through. But I'm saying as the day approaches, is there is is there any consecration or do you is do you just do anything? The Psalms are filled with approaching and countering God's presence with eagerness, excitement, and expectancy. Look at Psalm 62 5. Watch this. Psalm 62, 5. It says, my soul, wait thou only upon God. And here's the part I want to hone in. It says, for my expectation, that y'all, y'all, is from him. See, too many people come to church expecting something from the pastor. Too many people come to church expecting something from the 12. Too many come to church expecting something from the deacon, the trustee, the choir, the me. No, what are you expecting from God? Look at Micah 7, 7, and I want to see this in the amplified version. Watch what this says. Remember, we're talking about expectation Micah 7 7 from the amplified version it says but as for me watch this I will look to the Lord and be confident in him watch this I will keep watch I will wait with hope and here it is Reverend and expectancy for the God of my salvation for I know sooner or later that my God will hear me listen if God seems like he's distant if it seems like he's not answering remember what Job said Job said all the days of of my appointed life while I wait till my change come. In other words, he said, I'm waiting with tiptoe anticipation. You remember Haggai said, I'm going to sit on this watch, but I'm going to wait for my God because I know that God indeed is going to come and God is going to see about me because I am his child and God said if he can feed a sparrow, he will come, Andrew, and he will see about me. And I thank God that David said, and now I kind of got a glimpse of what David it said and why he said it in Psalm 122 verse 1 he said I will 
said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now let me help you. It wasn't the house that really got David excited. It was what the house represented. David understood that this house represents God's presence, that this house represents God's power, that this house represents God's prophecies, that this house represents God's plans, that this house represents God's pattern, this house represents God's purpose, this house represents God's peace, this house represents God's love, this house represents God's forgiveness, this house represents God's grace, this house represents God's mercy, this house represents God's redemption, this house represents God's reconciliation, this house represents God's restoration. I thank God, my brothers and my sisters, and I'm like David, I can't wait to get to the house of the Lord because I know the symbols of redemption are in there. I know that there's other believers in there. I know there's people God has healed in there. I know there's testimonies in there. I know there's witnesses in there. I know there's strength in there. I know there's power in there. I know there's revelation in there. I know there's insight in there. I thank God. My brothers and my sisters, you all know that familiar sayings comes in a set of three. You got ready, set, go. You got hop, skip, jump. You got stop, look, and listen. You got stop, drop, and roll. You got lights, camera, action. But for 2022, Macedonia is going to have three words that it may use exclusively. And it's going to be eagerness, excitement, and expectancy. In other words, I'm eager to see what God is going to do in the life of this ministry. I am excited about being a co-laborer with God. And I am expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to heal me. I'm expecting God to heal you. I'm expecting you to get that job. I'm expecting you to get that house. I'm expecting God to move mightily. I'm expecting your child to graduate. I'm expecting this. I'm expecting that because I got an expectation in my God. I got the expectation that the male factor on the cross had. You remember at first he himself and the other one, they were ridiculing Jesus. They said, well, if you are who you say you are, why don't you come on down from the cross and save us and save you but I'm telling you Andrew that thief that male factor he kept watching Jesus and he saw something in six hours that it takes a lot of us a whole lifetime to see he said wait a minute I've studied this man I've seen this man he said I am too close to heaven to go to hell look at his expectation he said Lord when you come into your kingdom remember me what do you mean when you come into your you expect him to have a kingdom he's bleeding he's nailed he can't move he looks helpless but the thief said no nah, I can see through all that he's the Christ the son of the living God and when you come into your kingdom I want you to remember me you talking about an expectation I thank you Jesus that I'm full of expectation because Jesus you went to Calvary for me Jesus you took nails for me you took nails in your hands you took nails in your feet they speared you in the side they crowned you with thorns and I thank God dear father I thank you Jesus for you did that because you was expecting Sunday to come. It looked dark on Friday, but you had a Sunday morning expectancy. And I'm so glad on Sunday morning you rose from the dead, stood on resurrected ground, and declared all power. And because you got all power, you not only rose from the dead, you rose in my heart. And because you're in my heart and I'm in Macedonia, then that means your spirit is in me because I'm in here. And God, we've got a holy expectation. We ain't gonna come looking at who got on what we gonna come expecting I wonder who God gonna bless today I wonder who's getting out of debt today I wonder who's gonna put the crutches down today I wonder who's gonna be healed from cancer today God I thank you for a holy expectancy in the name of Jesus we are gonna walk and open up this year with eagerness excitement and expectancy we talk about the church imparting expectancy. Today, I just wanted to, to get your spiritual palate wet as we look at this expectancy that we're going to expect in 2022. God, I thank you. Our worship, our praise is not going to be humdum, dry, routine, mundane. No. Father, you can take the same song. And you can do something with it you've never done before. 
you can take the same sermon you can take the same deacon you can take the same trustee you can take the same minister their father you can take the same member and do something supernatural this year is going to be a year for Macedonia of expectancy and if you don't expect nothing you're going to feel out of place because we expecting God to move we expecting God to save souls and change lives. We are expecting to be committed to God. We are expected to be convinced by Christ. We are expected to be consistent with scripture. We are expected to be compelled to evangelize. We are expected to commission to be unified. We're going to walk in expectancy. You're going to see it in our eyes and our hands and our feet and our language. We expect God to do what he said. He will do. God, I thank you because you gave us your promises we walk in expectancy there may be some listening YouTube, Facebook and you said you know I want this kind of expectancy because I've been expecting things but I've been expecting wrong and bad things and actually what I've expected I've actually gotten so I need to shift my expectation from the world to Jesus. But to do that, I first need to get in Jesus. And the way that I get in Jesus is I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. For when you do this, the scripture says in Romans, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's that simple. My brothers and my sisters, it's, it's that simple. I, I'm not going to complicate it. I'm not going to talk away from what this, It's that simple. It's that simple. If you do that, please, ma'am, please. Sir, call us. Email us. Our information on the screen. Let us know. We want to pray for you, with you. Macedonia is good soil, but we're not selfish. It doesn't have to be Macedonia. We can lead you to the church of your choosing. We want you to start off 2022 safe, sealed, and in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, we'll respond to you within 24 hours. That I can guarantee if you contact us. I thank you. I thank you that one of the marks of a mature church, and we'll see more of that next week and next, week, next week's lesson. I wanted to set the stage today, and I want you to come in expecting. I don't want you to come in, well, I'm going to sit in my seat, I'm going to do this, and they're going to pass. No, no. I want you coming to see what God going to do. In fact, to see what God has already done. And I don't want you to expect God to meet you at the church. I want you to expect that he's already there. And we're just going to meet with the body and see what God is going to do with us corporately. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for your prayers. Thank you for your listening ear, your kind spirits. Thank you again for your financial gifts, your prayers, your encouragement, all you do to be a blessing to this ministry. God bless you. This is the first Sunday of the month. Uh, that's that Sunday in which we uh, uh, do communion or the Eucharist uh, or the Lord's Supper, as you call it. All of those are the same thing there. And we would not have expectation if it wasn't for this because if you think about it, this supper, this communion, this Eucharist is built on expectation because Jesus says, I will do this no more henceforth with you until I do it with you new in the kingdom. So we're actually expecting to do this with Jesus. He left us a holy expectancy and we get to partake in an acted out sermon every time we do this. We get to look back at Calvary and to look forward. We get to do that, and that's what communion is all about. Now, you're at home. Obviously, you may not have the, the actual bread, and you may not actually have the actual juice, but if you get a piece of, because these aren't the official elements either, obviously, that they use, but if you get any piece of bread, if you got orange juice, Kool-Aid, milk, water, whatever, these are symbolic elements. If you got grape juice, that's fine. If you got a cracker, that's fine. But don't get hung up on the element. Get hung up on the source. And what it symbolizes, it symbolizes the broken body and the spilled blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
let us pray at this moment now this is a family meal which means that you need to be in the body of Christ Jesus said this do in remembrance of me you can't remember nobody that you've never known right so in other words you don't have to be baptized but you need to have confessed Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior and if there's someone out there who has confessed Christ just now then you're free to partake of this with the body there's no seniority here okay the minute you accept Christ you're just as saved as anybody else all right but now we don't need anybody saying in a skittish way that I want to accept Christ just to partake of this that's not right because that's partaking of the Lord's body wrongly because you're trying to get the elements without the essential of salvation which comes through Jesus so once you've accepted Jesus then you're free to partake with us and with the body and this is a commandment he said this do it was not a suggestion so then my brothers my sisters let us pray father thank you for this bread which represents your broken body that was broken for us this cup this wine this juice which symbolizes your blood we know this is not the actual blood of Jesus this is not the actual body we don't believe in transubstantiation where these elements become the body and blood of Christ no we believe it is a symbolic representation and for that we give you thanks thank you for the strength and the power that we get from taking communion together as a family as a body father thank you on that night in which you was betrayed the Bible said you took bread and you broke it and you passed it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you afterwards you took the cup you gave it to them and said take drink this is the blood of the New Testament shed for you the remission of sins God we thank you thank you father for these divine holy elements not divine because we've touched them but divine because of the, what they represent they represent your broken body your spilled blood which was shed for us on Calvary and for that dear father we give you thanks let us all now eat together let us all now drink together amen praise God hallelujah after they ate and drank the Bible says Kennedy that they went to the Mount of Olives we not yet have a Mount of Olives to go to uh, most of you if not all of you are at home you're at your place I pray that you would continue to worship and praise God on this day you don't have to be in the sanctuary to worship you don't have to be in a church service to worship so yes I pray that you will continue to worship and praise God this day uh, that you spend this day with your family and that it is a blessing to you and that prayerfully this sermon has caused you to have a sense of eagerness excitement and expectancy that you have not had before because you're going to need that to run with us in 2022 God says in Jeremiah 12 5 I believe if you got trouble running against the footmen what you gonna do with the horses we excited we expecting God to move in a miraculous mighty way and to show us things we expecting it God bless you praise God for you have a wonderful wonderful Sunday and once again thank you for tuning in joining us supporting us in every way you do God bless you I love you happy new year may your 2022 be higher greater than your 2021 god bless you we'll see you next sunday